Hi everybody, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, welcome to Healing with Love. Um, today we have something a little bit special. Uh, if you guys watched my live last night, you know that there was a series of synchronicities that um, one after the other that would, would you know, I'd be talking about something and then something else would bring it right back to that and it kept going into like a, like a loop. So I'd see it like a chain loop, like it would go and then it just keep, and it just progressed and then the very last thing that popped up went back to the beginning so it was like coming full circle. <clears throat> so I was seeing things coming full circle and um, there's some synchronicities that happened. Somebody commented on my video. It hadn't, it hadn't even processed yet. It was still processed. It's still processing on my YouTube so I don't know how I was able to watch it. but. I clicked on it and it took me to, um, I forwarded it a little bit to see how far it had already processed. And I forwarded it to like 15 minutes and I was kind of watching it, not really paying attention, but all of a sudden it starts glitching. So I don't know, I must have missed a bunch of glitches in the beginning, um, but the ones that I caught were um, very poignant messages. So the first glitch started when I was talking about this story that I'm going to share today, this, uh, the Jesus story. I'm not religious, so this is not going to be a religious, you know, testimony or anything like that. Um, I don't see uh, uh, Jesus in that way. I see him as an ascended master um, who's helping us with love. So anyway, let's get back to the, the live. Uh, when I was talking about this, how I was trying to edit this story and, and it just kept coming out, you know, all wrong because I didn't want to leave things out. The um, the screen glitched and a big wave of green came off to the side of the screen and like, uh, you know, lots of things that the number 13 happened to pop through. Um, it looked like a Dia de los Muertos Katrina. I posted it on my Instagram if you're interested, or you can just go watch the video. The timestamps would be um, 1816 and uh, 1909. So let's continue. Um, so that happened, and the next the next glitch was at 1909, and that's I just I just said okay, um, I am connecting to the highest good of all, and all of a sudden it glitched, and the number 33. Uh, 22 and 11 appeared and uh, it was interesting because it looked like the face of Jesus like it when you zoomed it out so it's kind of like whoa I had just been talking about it one minute earlier and then this connecting to the highest good so I felt that I needed to share this story again even though it's on my website um, I don't think a lot of people um, even go on my website so you know I'll probably be getting rid of it soon but let's, let's, I'm just going to read, um, this is a, a post that I have on there called The Apocalypse Dream I Had. And I'm just going to just read, the, read straight from the blog for you guys, okay? So, um, I posted this on my Facebook on September uh, 8th, 2017, so, but I wanted to share it on, I shared it on my blog. I had a dream about the apocalypse. Um, I had a dream about the apocalypse this morning. I promise it's not religious, though it may seem like it, but once you get to the end, you will understand. So what's, the, what's an apocalypse? Um, it's a disclosure of knowledge or revelation. Uh, in religious context, it's usually a disclosure of something hidden, a vision of heavenly secrets that can make sense of earthly realities. So that's the apocalypse. I know a lot of people confuse the apocalypse as something that is... Um, you know, Armageddon. Well, I guess Armageddon is a different word. So if you want to consider Armageddon versus apocalypse, they're two totally different different words. So uh, before I get to that dream, I'm sharing this story today because I feel it's time. I have waited almost 14 years to share this. It took 14 years to rid myself of fear of judgment and fear of ridicule and to have faith that it would be received with open hearts. I had always said, when I am ready, I will know and I will share it and I am ready so here it is and I don't remember um, that was in 2018 so that was 16 years ago <clears throat> that I had this uh, this vision so 
in 2003, I was on a very spiritual path, not religious, very spiritual. I was finding myself, trying to be better than the woman I was before. I would meditate hours a day uh, while my boyfriend was away for months on end. That alone time was crucial to my spiritual development. I was the happiest and most at peace I had been in all my life, manifesting abundance, being creative, writing, connecting with others, shining my light. It was bliss. Well, one night I was sitting in bed, sitting on the bed. I was sitting on my bed like this and my legs were hanging over the front of the bed. Um, and I was watching something mundane, um, uh, watching something mundane and an electric guitar playing shadow demon appeared over me and hypnotized me with heavy metal music. This was like, I don't know if this was a dream. I don't know, but um, I'm going to get to it. And uh, you know, I, at this point that I'm having this, I don't believe in demons. I don't believe in any of that stuff. So Sometimes the, the universe has to show you something in order for you to finally see behind the veil. So I was heavily meditating, so it was showing me the darker aspects of things that I, I suppress possibly, right? So yes, weird, I know, I was there. I loved heavy metal, so that was, a, that was strange for me. Um, then while I was hypnotized, another shadow figure took over. He wore a black cloak and looked much like the Grim Reaper. He telekinetically pinned my body against the, big, the bed and began vacuuming my soul out with his mouth, like Cat's Eye. Have you, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Cat's Eye by Stephen King. They got the little troll and he comes when you're sleeping and he pull, tries to pull your breath out. Um, terrified was an understatement. I'm not religious, but my heart knew the only way to make it stop was to ask for, for help from Jesus. Uh, I mentally screamed for Jesus to please save me, and he did. The shadow demons disappeared like that, and I was left sitting there wondering what the heck just happened. Um, I'm grateful to Jesus for making my torment stop. Uh, I talked to my sister about it, and we smudged my room with sage to cleanse it of anything sinister. And then a few days later, the most profound experience of my life happened. It has now taken me 15 years and 8 months to sh this at the time. It was 13 years and 8 months, so it's 15 years ago. 16 years ago. Um, I remember I was sitting on the bed and a flame, it was like a bluish color flame, appeared at the foot of my bed. I panicked because I thought my room was on fire. I could feel the flames penetrating my skin. I felt I was sure to burn, like I could feel the heat of it. I wanted to scream for help, but I was frozen in terror. Then out of the blazing flames appeared a man. He looked like Jesus, but not the way we perceive him or how he's depicted, but very similar, but not uh, not not the way that we see the imagery of the you know the Caucasian Jesus um, he almost looked so HD that it was like claymation he looked like clay if you've ever watched Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer and all those uh, you know holiday movies um, Frosty the snowman etc that claymation he looked like that like I, it was just weird um, not of this earthly frequency, I felt. Uh, I was terrified of him. I looked up and saw his face and immediately looked down because I did not feel worthy of his presence. I couldn't look at him. I felt shame and guilt and sadness and all I could think was that I was sorry and not worthy of, of him being here with me. He put his hand out for me to reach for and telepathically told me not to be scared, to have faith and to put my hand in his. I still could not look up at him without bawling, but I did have faith that I would not burn and I put my hand in his. Once my hand was firmly in his, he put his other hand on my forehead and prayed. He told me, pray for the demons to be gone. His voice did not sound of this earth. The frequency of it was direct, uh, distorted, but I understood telepathically what he was saying. I felt our hearts connect and I felt tremendous peace. And just as fast as he arrived, he was gone. I was left sitting there at the edge of the bed, drenched in sweat. I looked around and the fire had done no damage around me or the room. I didn't know how to feel after that. I'm not religious. Uh, I was not a follower of Jesus, nothing of the sort, more science-based. I, I had faith in a higher power. So I was confused about why uh, this being came to me out of all the people I know who are super religious. I also pondered what demons he meant since before the shadow demon uh, experience, I didn't believe in demons or stuff like that. Maybe these demons he spoke of were the demons of our past that we suppress deep down in our psyche. Who knows? Or, you know, our own personal demons, our addictions, or things like that that we withhold, we suppress. Uh, then a few days later, I had a dream. I walked into a church a few days later after that. I had, didn't share it with anybody because I was really embarrassed. I shared it with my sister, and that was pretty much it at the time because uh, it was kind of embarrassing. Um, then a few days later, I had a dream. I walked into a church, and there was a pianist playing. 
At the time, I had no clue who this man was, nor did I have a clue what song it was he was playing. I was seated directly in front of him, and he began to sing a song to me. And I just stared at him because the words were so beautiful, yet I had never heard them before. I woke up, and the words were ingrained in my brain, so I googled them. The man that was playing uh, was Chris Martin from Coldplay. Uh, random, because I no connection to Coldplay. I wasn't even a Coldplay fan at the time, uh, nor had I ever heard this song before. Um, anywho, the lyrics are as follows, and it's from The Scientist. Uh, I come to meet you, tell you I'm sorry. You don't know how lovely you are. I had to find you, tell you I need you, tell you I set you apart. Tell me your secrets and ask me your questions. Oh, let's go back to the start. Running in circles, coming up tails, heads on a science apart. Nobody said it was easy. It's such a shame for us to part. Nobody said it was easy. No one ever said it would be this hard. Oh, take me back to the start. I was just guessing at numbers and figures, pulling the puzzles apart. Questions of science, science and progress do not speak as loud as my heart. That's very poignant. Uh, tell me you love me, come back and haunt me. Oh, when I rush to the start, running in circles, chasing our tails, uh, coming back as we are. So I think the song was about repeating the same destructive pattern of life over and over again and expecting different results. Um, I needed to change the patterns and frequency. I needed to use my heart, listen to it. The heart speaks truth, it never lies. I've only shared this story with a handful of very close people in my life, but I have felt that I needed to share this. I felt the pressure building up and I just didn't know when I would share it. I knew I would get a sign and I feel it. And today is a day. I knew I would get a sign and feel it. Today was the day. Um, and the sign came to me in the form of a dream this morning. This was a couple years ago. I had this dream, and this is when I decided to share it on my website. Uh, in my dream, people were scared, terrified. Actually, they were terrified. Uh, in my dreams, people were scared, terrified, actually. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Lots of floods, quakes, hurricanes, fires, rain, etc. I was with a friend, and we were watching TV, and shit was hitting the fan. And I got a message from the TV that only I could see. It was the image behind the dollar. Then I zoomed into the pyramid. Then zoomed into the eye. Then I zoomed into the portal in the eye. Then zoomed into who was coming through the portal. Then I saw who was coming through. I said to my friend, he's coming. She, she became terrified. And at first it was Satan. She thought it was Satan. You know, fear, death, destruction, despair, hopelessness. And she became more terrified. But then I told her, no, 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 not him. Uh, and then she saw the bright light. She began crying and bowing and kneeling at my feet, thanking me and begging me for forgiveness for not seeing it before. She saw a demon coming through, but I told her it was all about perspective. What we see is what we get. I began changing who was coming through the portal. Instead of evil and destruction, I saw love, peace, light, and compassion, brotherhood, community, and empathy coming through. She just wept at my feet with tears of apology, sadness, gratitude, love, and relief. Her fear dissipated and she just kept bowing at my feet with gratitude. I believe I was her and she was me. We are one. I was thanking myself for seeing a positive perspective versus the darkness and demons my brain, ten my brain tends to lead towards at times. So in my dream, I was saving my world with a perspective change. No longer seeing evil, demons, darkness. Just seeing love. Jesus represents love to me, not religion. He's a, a person like you and I who just came to earth to preach love, much like many people out there who are doing the same without the title of a God. In that sense, we are all gods, gods of our own world and reality. Since I communicate very well with numbers, this is what I see. What I got from this dream is that is I see us moving beyond the greed, eight, into the age of enlightenment, nine. People are no longer solely focusing on money, but focusing more on helping others, charity, arts, humanitarianism, love, peace, compassion, understanding, empathy, healing their own past wounds. And I see an old belief system falling away where money was God. Back to the original God and creator of our world, us. I am you, you are me, we are all brothers and sisters on this beautiful earth. We change this world by changing our perspective on it. Our past is our past, we leave it there and focus on beauty. We can create together now. It's all about perspective. Thank you for listening. Feeling gratitude. So I just wanted to share that. And uh, this is going to have a follow-up video. Uh, the video is going to be, um, I won a car many years ago, but it, it's not about the car winning the car, but it 
also relates back to Jesus and crows and birds. Um, something about birds and nature um, all connected, all going together. So I just want to say thank you all so much for, for being here and listening to me tell my story. Like I said, I'm not religious. It's not about religion. It's just uh, telling you an experience I had um, that to this day I can never shake and uh, it's just a strong connection to Jesus and it's not Jesus in the Christianity sense it's not Jesus in the you know how everybody sees uh, religion it's not about that religion just divides us um, we need to all come together under one one God and um, yeah so I will be sharing the crow story next maybe I'll just turn, stop this one and start the next one but thank you all so much for watching namaste